Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another animal painting in my watercolour sketchbook, only this time I'm going to be painting with ink. So I'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages to using ink over my usual watercolours, as well as giving you a few tips and techniques as we go through the painting. So I hope you enjoy the video. All the materials I use will be listed in the description box below, along with the reference photo I used from Pixabay. After last week's looser sketchbook painting of a peacock, I wanted to try out a more detailed painting focusing on the peacock's face, so that's what I'm doing today. I begin as always with a quick freehand sketch using a regular HB pencil. I chose this reference photo because I like the idea of the peacock almost poking his head around the corner of the sketchbook, and the detail in the eye was really clear too. Detail which I thought I could capture more easily using a dip pen and ink, so that's where the idea for using ink came from. And as always, I like to lighten my pencil sketch using a kneaded eraser so it doesn't show through on the finished painting. The inks I'm using today are by Dr. PH Martins and I've picked out five main colours for the peacock. Black, blue, violet, green and brown. These 15ml bottles don't come with pipettes, so I just draw out a small amount using a cheap plastic pipette and put it in my palette. For the swatching out I use my reference photo as a guide, and one of the disadvantages with these inks is that there's only a small range of colours, so you need to mix your own. But they do mix really nicely and I mix together some blue and some violet to come up with a really nice bright blue for the peacock's feathers. Normally I swatch the colours out on the left hand side of my sketchbook, but for some reason today I did it on a separate piece of paper. With my inks all swatched out it was time to start on the painting, and I started off with the peacock's eye and used my dip pen dipped in neat black ink just to outline the darkest part of the eye. This is what I really love about working with inks, is the fact that you can use this dip pen to get such precise neat details. I then used a smaller brush to add in some brown to the iris of the peacock's eye. For the pupil I began by putting in a base layer of my blue violet mix, being careful to leave any highlight areas as once the ink is dry it's permanent, so unlike watercolour you can't re-wet it to lift colour later. This does have the advantage though that if you want to re-wet the area you won't disturb the details or colour underneath. With a base layer of the eye down, I then moved on to the beak, and for this I used the wet in wet method, so I pre-wet the area with clean water, before then adding a very dilute mix of black and violet. I then added a bit more detail to the darker areas of the beak using some brown ink. Before then going back and adding in some more detail to the eye, I used a little bit of that violet colour again just to do the outside lid of the eye, and then went in with some neat black ink to darken up the pupil. One thing I really like about working with ink is that it doesn't tend to dry lighter as much as watercolour does anyway, so you maintain that real vibrancy in your colours. Now I use the violet ink directly using my dip pen again just to do those feather areas on the top of the peacock's head. The fine nib of the dip pen makes it easy to add those tiny barbs here, and I love how you can get such precise detail. I do think ink really lends itself to this style of painting, but it's also flexible enough to be used more loosely as well, as I'll show you a bit later on in the painting. For the peacock's head I was going for a softer look so used the wet in wet technique, pre-wetting the paper with clean water before dropping in some of that blue violet mix. I also added in some of the green ink whilst the paper was still wet so that they could bleed together on the paper. I also added in some black ink to the wet paper just to darken up those corner areas and give it some contrast before then doing the same method on the area around the peacock's eye this time using a mixture of the green and some of that blue-violet mix as well. 
And whilst I do have a much more limited range of colours with these inks compared to my watercolours, I do find they mix together really well and really easily to give you whatever colour that you need. Now moving on to the area under the peacock's beak and this is why I love working with ink. I love the way that the wet and wet technique works with ink and how it just whooshes into the water so smoothly and quickly. You can get some really nice effects with this and it's just so satisfying to watch and to paint with. You do need to work quite quickly with ink though because it does dry a lot more quickly than watercolour so I tend to work a small area at a time. Working like this means you can use the ink similar to watercolour so all the while your ink is wet you can still drop in more colour and soften edges with a clean damp brush. For larger areas like the neck of this peacock I switch up to using a water brush and this gives me the option of quickly adding clean water if I need to to prevent any harsh edges and to keep the paper wet. I use short flicky strokes with the brush and work in the direction of feather growth, pulling out some smaller feather details on the dry area of paper outside the bird's neck. I also start to drop in some darker blue-violet mix onto the left hand side of the peacock's neck where there is more shadow. And then I carry on moving further down the bird's neck, adding more water and then dropping in ink. And this looser style was what I was talking about earlier on in the video and why I think painting with ink is so versatile. You may have to work a bit more quickly with it but it's a lot of fun and you can really take advantage of its permanence when dry as it makes layering easy. In its concentrated form it's not as transparent as watercolour but diluted you can really get some clean and bright results. I also really like the fact that if you want to increase the values on your painting you can re-wet the whole area without worrying about blooms or cauliflowers or anything like that and just add in another layer. You can drop in a darker value the same as you did on the first layer and enjoy watching it bleed into those wet areas. With the feathers at the top of the bird's neck still wet, I then started to build up the area around the peacock's eye. I used the green mixed with the blue-violet mix to create a really nice almost teal colour. I then added some of this to the top of the bird's head by its beak and blend it into those blue feathers around the back of his head. Now I'm going in to darken up the area around the peacock's eye again and for this I pre-wet the area using clean water and then drop in that blue, violet and green mix. When this is dry I then go in with a fine paintbrush to add some detail to the white area around the peacock's eye. I use a diluted brown ink for this. Then it was time to go back to the peacock's crest and add some more colour over the top of the violet ink we put down in the first place. I just use some of the blue violet mix to brighten it up and pull it all together. With that done, I then decide to add some of the green colour to the feathers on the peacock's chest and for this again I'm pre-wetting the whole area with clean water before dropping in some more ink. I add in some more concentrated greens and blues and let them bleed together on the paper. I also leave some gaps in between the feather strokes to give it a bit more interest. I then start to work in some much brighter, darker value to the bottom half of the peacock's neck. This area is quite dark in the reference photo so I add more concentrated blues as well as some greens and then I get really brave and add in quite a lot of black, which was a really scary part of the painting because I almost thought that it was too dark. But as I worked it into the other areas of the feathers, it didn't look too bad afterwards. The black mixed in with the blue and the green already on the wet paper 
and created this really nice dark indigo colour, luckily, and I think it turned out okay. I then used this same dark value to fill in the area underneath the peacock's beak where it was darker and in shadow. I also go in with some neat black ink and just redefine the area around the peacock's eye to really help it stand out and make it look shiny. I also redefine the areas around the peacock's nostril as well as the area around his beak and at the top of his nose. To add some more details to the feathers on the bird's head I'm now going in with an angled brush just to dot in some darker values and make his head look more fluffy. I extend this darker shading around to the area where the peacock's crest is just to kind of blend it in and look like they're really coming out from the back of his head. I'm also now going in and adding some shorter feather strokes and some more contrast to the feathers on the peacock's neck using the same angled brush. The ink is a lot more concentrated now and I've hardly got any water on my brush, so I'm almost using the dry brush technique. I just thought it would add a bit more contrast and a bit of texture and make those feathers look a bit more interesting. Now I could have stopped this ink painting right here as that was all I wanted to do to the bird. But I did have this idea that I'd do a bit of a blurry wet on wet background. And I very much think that if you get an idea, you should always go with it, otherwise you'll always be left wondering what if. So I decided to use some yellow ochre and dropped it into a wet background to create this really blurry look. I also dropped in a mixture of the yellow ochre mixed with the blue ink to get almost a sap green colour. I also dropped in some splodges of yellow ochre as I thought this was a really nice contrast to the more precise and detailed painting of the bird itself. I then went back with my dip pen and some neat black ink to fill in a few last whiskers and some details around the white area of the bird's face. And I have to say I'm really happy with how this turned out and it's not often I say that so if you haven't ever tried painting with ink and you have the chance you should definitely give it a go. Painting with ink is similar to painting with watercolour but there are some obvious differences too. Ink's permanence being the main one but just by knowing the differences you can take advantage of them. You can use similar techniques as with watercolour as well so it's a really flexible medium to work with and after today I feel really inspired to use it again. I also think it would be nice to try ink together with watercolour in the same painting and that way you could get the best of both worlds. So let me know what you thought of this peacock, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful or interesting and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great week, take care and I'll see you in the next one, bye!